Thank you. Okay, off you go, Sarah. Fabulous. So first of all, a huge warm welcome um, to the webinar this afternoon. <coughs> Excuse me, my name's Sarah Wright, and I am delighted um, to be hosting this. So I'm a senior lecturer in primary education. Um, at Edgehill University based in the northwest of England and this afternoon what we're talking about is student engagement using class flow. So I'm going to take you through some key pedagogical principles of engagement and then we're going to think about how we can use class flow to make the most of them in the classroom. Um, so as Janice said please feel free to ask any questions as you're going along. Please feel free to tweet along. You can use my Twitter handle that's on the screen. We could also use Classflow UKI. Um, it will be great to see you connecting throughout the session. So yeah. before we start, what we've really got to think about um, is what student engagement actually looks like. So we've got a definition here from an education glossary, um, which harnesses a lot about what we already know good learning should look like. It's passionate, it's interesting, and we really want to foster curiosity. So we not only need to think about the motivation that children have to join in our lessons, but the opportunities that we're giving them to share their learning journey, their progress, and their love of learning throughout that time. So that's what I'm going to show you with Classflow, how we can share those things. So we need to consider what's really um, involved in getting this student engagement going. Well, there are three main things that I want us to consider first. First of all, the learner. What do you actually want them to be doing? What kind of role do you want them in? Are they going to just be receiving information or do you want them to be a real participant in the process? Then we've got to think about ourselves as a teacher. Again, what is your role going to be? This is a huge consideration. Are you going to be the one holding all of the knowledge and passing it on or are you letting your children construct it for themselves? This will and absolutely should shift depending on each and every lesson that you teach. And finally, let's think about the content. This really is the bridge between the teacher and the learner. What are you going to provide to hook them in and support them in the learning? We've also got something else to consider here. We need to um, add another element to pull all together, and we need to think about delivery. So we can have the best pedagogy, we can have the best content, but we also need to think about the way in which we're delivering that to our students. We want to think about about providing learning experiences rather than lessons, allowing the students that we teach to become really immersed in the learning that we're presenting. So, Ken Robinson reiterates this in his brilliant book, Out of Our Minds, talking lots about creativity. And what Ken Robinson's suggesting is that we actually need to totally rethink the approaches we're taking to teaching and learning, and quite often the dominant ones, the ones we use most often. We Usually as a teacher installed at the front of the classroom, directing the children, delivering input. But are we actually stopping to consider what they're actually doing? For the most part, with traditional teaching methods, they're being quite passive, sitting, being expected to soak up our knowledge for themselves. I think it's time we thought a little bit more closely about what passive and active learning is. So let's have a quick look at the key principles. Passive learning sees the learner being pretty much dependent on us as a facilitator. They're a consumer of knowledge and tend to be the recipients for the most part of the learning. Not very inspiring at all, I'm sure you'll agree. Now let's have a think about active learning. Here, students become real participants. They'll create, at times lead their own learning, and have multiple opportunities to restructure and, more importantly, to apply their knowledge. So two really different styles, but the problem we have with it is, is that some teachers can confuse engagement with active learning and they're two very different things. So let's take this for example. You've got a beautiful front of classroom display and you use your panel to show a dynamic and relevant video to your class. Engaging, absolutely. Active, definitely not. Think back to the principles we've just discussed. All your students are doing when they're watching that video, no matter how brilliant it is, is consuming. Now, we know that these videos can be really useful, so let's look at elevating this to an active experience for all of our learners. So, one of my favourite features of Classflow is the dual track, 
So this basically means that I have both teacher cards, which appear on the front of class display, and student cards, which appear on student devices. So I can have one thing on my panel whilst my learners interact with something totally different on their own devices. Not only does this make use of every single device that I've got in the classroom, but it allows a really dynamic experience for participants. I might have my video playing whilst getting them to consider questions, manipulating objects on their screen. It might just be something as simple as getting them to log in with their own student account on Classflow so they can create their own personalised notes on the content as we go. What this is doing is giving them the opportunity to interact with the content rather than just consume it. So now we've really begun to take this from the passive to the active. Let's look at using some more class flow features to personalise this learning even more. Strong student engagement comes from understanding the needs of your learners and actually providing for them in real time. This can often mean providing tasks on multiple levels, thinking about support or even what your students are creating. Once I have my students in a class, Classflow allows me to group them. This means I can send down different student cards to multiple groups of students or even individuals all within the same lesson. Great differentiation means the right level of challenge and support and that should therefore increase the engagement that we're seeing. So, We've taken an activity that we know and we absolutely love, video something that we're confident with, that has a clear impact in the classroom, but what we've done is change the delivery. We've changed the delivery so it becomes a more active process um, and an active experience for our learners. Another theory that I want us to consider um, is growth mindset. So this is an absolute labour of love from uh, Carol Dweck, who looks at the psychologies of intelligence. Dweck herself admits that this is often quite a misunderstood theory, so let's take a closer look at some of the key principles. So, here's the thinking behind a fixed and a growth mindset. With a fixed mindset, we see intelligence as inherent, that there are some things that we're naturally good at, but there'll always be a limit, a cap to, uh, to what we can achieve, to what we can physically do. Growth mindset focuses much more on the process of learning rather than just the outcomes. So it's about recognising and reflecting on the journey of learning. And Dweck really does recommend using multiple strategies for tasks, as well as strong, ongoing and really fluid formative assessment throughout your sessions for this. So a really key feature of Classflow that can help with this um, is the instant whiteboard, which is absolutely one of my favourites purely because it doesn't require any preparation, doesn't require any planning, but it can be used instantly on the go for formative assessment, sharing materials, and really getting those dynamic principles into your classroom. So a lot of you will have used mirroring um, in the classroom, mirroring screens using something like Air Server, um, which again is an instant win in terms of sharing progress and achievement, but it's also quite passive. It means that children are sat looking at something that's quite flat, whereas with Classflow, I can pull in ready-made content to share with my class, I can ask for examples of their work, and more importantly, I can then get them to interact with it. I can perhaps send it down to them, getting them to add examples, I can pull this back into my lesson, and I can really get them to reflect on that with the rest of the class. Growth mindset also suggests using a range of strategies to achieve a task. And Classflow is going to really help me share the strategies that each and every learner is using within my classroom, whatever medium that it's in. So for example here, I've asked students to share an update of their work. One student has chosen to write their notes here in traditional form uh, and snap a quick photograph and the other has typed their notes directly into Classflow. So a real opportunity to embrace and capture how differently students engage with tasks. So two very different students working in different ways, sharing their learning in completely different styles, but Classflow's allowing me to capture it all, react to it, and share that back with the class as well. Now, research from the likes of Dweck and people like Black and William shows that the quicker students receive feedback, that the more impact that it has on their learning. 
Classflow's not only got the option for me to build in assessments for my students, but to give instant feedback on their answers. So I can very quickly create a set of questions where I can give them um, answers either via um, feedback if they get something wrong, I can give them an extension if they get something right, um, I can create real-time feedback for them. I can also access the marketplace, which is what you're seeing on your screen now, um, where there are absolutely loads of ready prepared question sets, which then I can then adapt to the needs for my students. Instant feedback makes a learner feel welcomed, makes them feel like they matter, and that is definitely going to equal better engagement in our classrooms. Another concept for us to consider um, is the learning pit. And the learning pit was developed by a chap called James Nottingham um, to build on the concept of growth mindset. You can see James's Twitter on the bottom of the screen there. Um, James developed a process that looked at four C's of learning. Um, so we start with a concept. So that could be um, a stimulus in the form of a discussion, a question. It might just be your curriculum starting point, um, but it's where our learning begins. And then the children um, are in the pit. So when we say in the pit, they're experiencing some form of cognitive struggle. So they might need to debate strategies to work out a problem, um, work hard to find out a solution to something, or experience that really well-known feeling of being stuck. You know, all key aspects of building a growth mindset and putting your students firmly at the center of learning as an active participant. So, once the children have gone through uh, their concepts and the conflict, they then begin to construct their own knowledge, they begin to work out for themselves what they need to do to resolve the conflict. And in the final crucial stage of considering their own learning, they reflect upon the whole process. So quite a complex process, um, but it's quite easy to think about when we look at it visually. So up here would be where we start with our concept. We then fall into the pit with the, com uh, with the conflict. We're going to construct our learning to get out, and then we're going to consider it as well. Um, now, that's a really complex journey. Um, so how can Classflow help me with this? Well, we need an efficient and effective way of our learners communicating where they're up to. So even in the most simple of terms, I could send the pit down to my students and ask them to indicate um, whereabouts they are. So if we just have that. What I'm doing is creating a visual record of their progress. So here, my students decided to draw a little stick man to show me where they are um, and give me a little comment. But they could be adding examples of their work. They could be adding photographs. Um, they could even be telling me how they're feeling about their learning at that time. But it's all helping me capture and their engagement and also their progress. So what we've done again is we've taken a really strong approach, we've taken something that's underpinned with theory, with pedagogy, and we're using the delivery of that learning to help us create a really strong sense of student engagement. So what class flow is really helping me to do is to construct that learning. So rather than have this kind of didactic, passive task, and bringing a real dynamic pace to my lessons, and also a culture of collaboration and sharing. So I'm involving my students in their own learning, and it creates this expectation of participation. So rather than just having um, traditional delivery, where I'm sending things down to the students and asking them to respond verbally, I've been able to capture um, each and every aspect of their learning. And we're also really starting to let metacognition happen. So we're beginning to think about thinking in terms of our own teaching, in terms of our learning, and also how it happens for our students. What are we doing to make them think about their own thinking? So you'll find um, a huge amount of support on getting started with class flow. Um, on the website. When you log in, you'll see um, the help function up here and also lots of Let's Getting Started videos. Um, and there's also lots of support available on Twitter. So you can follow um, Classflow UKI or you could also follow any of the Promethean um, active advocates like myself. Um, speaking of which, being a Promethean advocate is something that I'm superbly proud of uh, and get a lot from. 
So I get to work with a really incredible group of inspirational educators on exciting projects, on discussions, on things that have a real impact on learning. Um, we feel like we've got a real voice and it feels like it helps us um, make a difference to lots of learners. So I think Janice is going to give you a little bit more um, information on how you can apply if you're a UK teacher. Thanks back over to you, Janice. Hi, sir. Sorry about that. I've been, been answering some uh, messages on the chat there. No so I, do, I do think there's a few people that have been having difficulty with the audio, but I just want to remind everybody that the session is recorded, so you will get uh, a link to this to be able to um, listen to afterwards. I, I don't think we've not, we've had lots of nice comments coming in, Sarah. Um, not so many questions, which is good. Okay. I think lots of people really like that pet idea. Um, and really like using the image of it for students as well. Um, so, yeah, some, like I say, some great comments coming in, and I'll make sure you have access to those afterwards. As Sarah was saying just at the end here, um, Sarah Wright is one of our Permethean advocates in the UK. So the advocate group is um, a group of educators or people who work in education that, that um, Promethean work very closely with. And we... Um, involve them in, in a lot of the discussion around our products and future products that go out um, and make sure that they have that, that educational voice um, to give us to help best support um, our customers, like yourselves, people who are using our technology that are out there. So um, if you are interested in the Advocate program, then just drop me an email. You will have that on the, the little... Um, a, a email that you will have following up this webinar with the link. So if you are based in the UK and are interested in finding out more about being an advocate, please do let me know. So I'm going to get you to turn the page just one more time. Sure. Please, to the next one. Okay. Um, now, there were a couple questions with people not realizing that the call was about um, class flow. So we were talking about student engagement, and, and as I'm sure you all got from um, Sarah's fantastic presentation there, talking about the theory behind student engagement as well, and then talking about how um, class flow can help you to, to apply that within the classroom. And I think you covered that very nicely um, as well, Sarah. But if you are a little bit um, interested in finding out more about class flow itself, because you didn't necessarily realize that coming onto the call, or maybe you've heard of class flow um, and I'm only just starting to understand what it's about. In the UK, we do have a fantastic um, site called resource.classflow.co.uk um, that will give you some great um, ideas about class flow, what it is, and we also ha have um, some really nice little quick guides to help you understand how class flow can be used and is being used in classrooms um, out there already. As I did mention in the chat, Class Flow is a free website, and yes, I do know that there are people from all over the world that are joining this call, and that's absolutely fantastic. Um, I am specifically talking about ClassFlow.co.uk because that's what we use in the UK here. If you are unsure about whether Class Flow is available where you're located, again, please use my email address that you will get in the follow-up email. Just drop me a line, and I'm happy to answer any questions I can, and if I can't, answer it properly, then I will make sure to pass your details on to somebody from Promethean within that region that can do that as well. Okay, so I hope um, everybody found that useful tonight, and I'd like to say a big thank you to Sarah, as always, another fantastic presentation, um, and thank you so much, and please make sure, as I say, any questions, um, keep them coming in, we'll leave the chat open for just a little bit longer. Thanks for getting the call tonight, everybody. Thanks, Sarah.